Hello, my name is Moritz, uh, also known as uh, M Warning. Um, yes, and I'm going to talk about uh, mesh routing and, um, well, basically a problem uh, we have in the Freifunk community and um, something I've done to hopefully, well, uh, to help solving it. It's a hard problem, I haven't solved it, um, but I've wrote a tool that uh, hopefully makes it easier or more at least more fun. Uh, to solve it, and uh, the problem is about scaling. Um, yeah, back to the problem, I guess. Um, for the Freifunk uh, community is, uh, is a mobile mesh network um, in different towns, and um, the problem is when you have big towns like uh, Munich or Berlin, uh, then you have uh, probably thousands of nodes. And uh, the current problem is that uh, the routing protocols, the mesh routing protocols running on these networks uh, scale uh, only up to, well, maybe a few hundred nodes, like uh, 800 and, well, 1,000 is something like uh, the current limit. Um, where it's unbearable because um, every every router basically has to say, oh, I'm still here, and it sends this information to every other route and uh, every few seconds, uh, some sort of hello, I'm still there message. And um, yeah, and everybody does it, like thousand notes to every other, all the other 999 notes. And as you can imagine, that's a lot of traffic. The routing protocols are not, uh, not stupid. They're doing a lot to optimize on this, uh, um, on this uh, approach and, but it's still, well, when we have a few hundred nodes, it's like 15 kilobytes per node. And, uh, well, when you calculate it uh, up to a month, I think it was something like 40 gigabytes uh, per month per node and also on the, on the server side. And that's a huge load. Um, also, uh, I mean, it's a lot of cost for the server. It's uh, bad for the bandwidth of the, um, uh, okay, of the provider, but we don't care. Um, but um, this is also the load that goes over Wi-Fi. So uh, somebody accusing Freifunk of polluting the wi uh, wireless spectrum is um, not uh, not wrong. I mean, um, yeah, 50 kilobytes all the time over the mesh network, over the over wire, over the air. It's it's not nice. Um, we also um, well hinder maybe some other uh, devices on the same channel, and uh, yeah. And that leads uh, to several approaches to, to, to target this problem. It's by, for example, segmentation. So basically what most uh, communities like in Munich or, well, areas do is they say, okay, we do something like uh, separate mesh networks where we have a small mesh network, like uh, 300 nodes. And uh, then in the other part of the town, we have a different mesh network and they're configured in that way that they don't mesh in between. So you have distinct networks, uh, multiple distinct net networks in, in a town to keep the mesh size uh, small um, because um, it scales quadratically the traffic when you have a mesh network because everybody talks to, uh, needs to send information to everybody else. And um, well, and this is, pro is, is the current approach uh, to this problem. Uh, it's called segmentation. And um, yeah, that's how it's done, but it's, it's, it's not nice because uh, you have some static uh, server configuration and that means, uh, well, it's not really a mesh network on that level and uh, you have, well, con need to have co static configuration and that's not really decentralized because you have to, uh, to, to install routes between those mesh networks uh, on your server that act as a gateway between those segmented uh, networks. Okay, solutions so far, yeah, uh, most uh, mesh networks in Germany at least uh, run uh, OLSR, uh, Batman, uh, and um, some are experimenting with Babel. Um, they have similar limits and, um, <coughs> yeah, and um, so far they're doing a good job to optimize on this state, um, a very good job, but, um, well, who wouldn't ha like to have a mesh network that scales up to like uh, a million nodes? I is, it, is it even possible or is it uh, impossible? I don't know. Uh, we will s maybe look a bit into this problem. Um, it, it won't take long. 
Um, well, and I have a dream that uh, mesh networks hopefully will be able to cover the entire globe or something like that, um, and entire entirely g decentralized. Uh, but the question remains: Is that even possible? Um, I don't know. Um, let's take a step back because we know something that appears to scale. Uh, it's called the internet. Maybe has somebody have uh, heard about it? Um, so you have local networks, and then you have a sta uh, something like a configured route, and then you have something like subnets, uh, where you have some sort of tree stru structure where you can, which scales very good, and uh, on on the well beneath uh, on the global scale you have a BGP network where you have a lot of static routes that are changed uh, interchanged between uh, different uh, parts of the network so everybody knows where everybody else is it sounds a bit like a mesh network but it's really static um, um, with fallbacks stuff like that but uh, in essence it's not a mesh network and uh, it won't help us here okay so um, maybe we can uh, have a quick look at how Batman works or all is off for, for that matter. It's a gross oversimplification. Don't crucify me. Uh, it's um, it's really it really is a, is a high level perspective. Maybe they have a lot of shortcuts and optimizations inside and and really uh, cool things. Uh, but basically, you have uh, Batman Advanced, uh, which does a distance vector approach. Distance vec vector means you send something like um, um, like a hello packet to everybody else. And everybody else is uh, on some by some neighbor receiving this hello packet and knows, oh, okay, I've got this hello packet from route uh, from router or from node A, and I'm B, and uh, okay, and I've got it by my neighbor C. So if I want to reach this ru this node, um, I send uh, to router C my packet, and uh, in the ho and he will do likewise, and everybody has just a, a table of. Um, one one in one column, the uh, the MAC address, for example, of every node in the network, and in the other column, um, the neighbor you have to to send this package uh, that can reach by any sort uh, this uh, this node. So it's basically yeah, I send um, uh, he over there sends a packet through everybody whoever is next to him, and those do likewise until it reaches me, and I hear, ah, okay, from you, I've got uh, a packet from him, uh, basically, and so when I want to uh, send a packet to him, okay, he's moving f away, so, yeah, well, ig let's ignore that, then I will send you the packet, because I know I've got a packet from him, uh, by you, so you know how to, to what to what your neighbor to send this package so it will reach the destination. So that's basically it. All this R is uh, very similar, but uh, it h maintains the whole topology in the uh, in the in the RAM and uh, can do a lot of uh, optimizations uh, on it. And um, yeah, and it knows the, the state of every link. It doesn't have really a table, but really the entire topology in its RAM. Um, so that's basically it, in my sense, uh, in my uh, belief. And uh, also something that, uh, if you are interested in mesh networks, that uh, you will hear uh, f f first is something like a mesh vectoring protocol is proactive, it's reactive. Um, Olis R and Batman, they're both uh, proactive. That means everybody sends some, some routing information, for example, a hello packet, regularly. It, doesn't, uh, it does it every few seconds. Um, even if nobody is hearing. Um, and reactive means um, you get a packet, you need to route it, but you don't know yet. So then you start asking everybody, where is everybody and uh, how to reach this, uh, this target I want to send this packet to. So you react to the pa pa incoming packet and then you, well, try to figure out um, how to, s uh, where to send this packet. And uh, proactive is like, Okay, I, I, tr I proactively discover everybody, so when I s get a packet, I already know where to send it. So that's a bit difference of uh, between proactive and reactive, but uh, proactive is uh, makes more sense b because uh, when you have um, sort of a lot of traffic, like in a Freifunk network, 
um, it doesn't make sense to to react uh, to packets you get. You get all t all the time your packets, uh, so it makes sense to to um, to collect this routing information all the time. So, okay, um, <coughs> yeah, back to the can it scale? Um, well, the thing is, um, I think it's proven. Um, don't quote me on that. Uh, that uh, for entirely uh, complete random networks, mesh networks, you can't do it efficiently um, with limited resources. But um, the thing is, um, real networks are not really uh, random. You see, um, random. Uh, they may be random on short distances, like uh, there's a router, there's a router, and um, um, it sees uh, the router over there. And, but there's a router on top, that which is really uh, next to one node, but they don't see each other because there's some metal plate. I don't know. So you have um, when you're a lot of when you have a lot of nodes, the connections look sort of random. But if you go on uh, bigger scales, you see uh, that uh, longer routes over long distances are becoming rare. So. Um, when we see uh, when we would have a mesh routing network that is like a square, square kilometer big, or even bigger, then we see that we have a few connections that go from one end to the other end, but it's really the exception. So it's not really random. So there's hope um, that we might be able to map some structure on this uh, network that allows us to to route efficiently. <coughs> also. Um, Smartphones, people with smartphones, they they go around, they 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 go out of uh, of reach of one node, they they appear, um, but uh, usually nodes they stand on the balcony, something like that, or nailed to the wall. Hopefully they still work. Um, they doesn't move, they don't move, so that makes also things easier. So uh, what can we do? Uh, we need to tinker, and. Um, my plan or my hope is to find some structure on networks uh, in a decentralized fashion uh, where we can route very efficiently. The thing is, um, for example, if you have um, it's like a node in a line, like you have one node, one, two, three, and ev every node just sees right and left, then it's really easy to, to route. I mean, they can uh, just um, enumerate themselves by some stupid number, for example, one, two, three, four, five, that is easily to achieve uh, in a distributed fashion. It's rather quickly, I would say. And uh, then when you give a, a packet somewhere and say, OK, this packet is for five, you see, OK, hmm, this is uh, 18 and uh, this is 16, then you know where, in which direction to send. And this is like constant memory, constant effort. This is uh, very scalable. But of course, uh, in reality, we don't have a mesh network that is always in one line. Uh, but um, if you can find some innovation, some structure, where we uh, can uh, have something like geo coordinates, um, but with our GPS, then we might be able to, to route very efficiently. Um, and since our mesh networks are not really random, it might be even possible to have like really big scale uh, mesh routing networks. At least that's my uh, hope. And since I haven't uh, really like uh, thought about it like a lot, uh, I don't have an answer yet. But uh, I thought, okay, let's maybe I need something to tinker with. So I I wrote a simulator for trying out uh, mesh networks, uh, mesh ma mesh net routing algorithms to test a bit, tinker a bit, and try how it works. It's, of course, not real world. You have a lot of other simulators that go really down to the hardware, um, are really, um, yeah, you have something like jitter on links and stuff like that, and moving nodes, um, uh, st stuff like the network simulator 3 and other uh, Omnet++, plus plus, I think, um, simulators where you can do it very on a low level. Um, stuff, but it's it's hard to use, and I like something um, with a bit more fun. So I wrote something, and um, it's on Git. Uh, and oh no, there is it. Yeah, I have a on my domain. I have uh, some test setup, some demo setup, but it's also on Git. And now what I can is uh, I can select. Um, 
this uh, graph punct dot json dot file uh, when you know Freifilm communities they usually have some sort of map where you can see the nodes and what they basically display is, is this data from this graph dot json file and um, you can download it uh, I can for example show you um, how I would need to look for some Freifunk community um, Freifunk well Leipzig oh wait maybe I don't know if what they use um, uh, well, never mind. Um, well, at least they can they load this data from this file, and um, I can load it here. You see, um, you have something like these are VPN servers, these big nodes, and you have a lot of clients. These are wireless routers with some bad links. And what I can do, I can uh, load the second file, which has the node information. And now we also have the names, and uh, the road dots are clients. And um, now I can do stuff like editing. Uh, I can remove nodes. Um, I can connect nodes, change the links, and also export it to some other format, uh, like uh, yeah, NetJSON or the Mesh Viewer format that I've just import it and uh, okay I can connect those oh, yeah, or even more I can do a lot of stuff and I can also create new geometry a uh, new topology like um, like this one it's, it's nice and wiggling and now it's confused uh, okay so and um, yeah Let's uh, remove this a bit because uh, I'm going to show you some example. Because uh, I've wrote this simulator to, to explore some mesh routing strate strategies. And um, I wrote the simulator and uh, every node is represented by, s by a it's, it's uh, based on a class in JavaScript. You can implement it very easily. It's just a method ma basically where you get in a, an array of uh, packets and you s sort into, into the outgoing um, array. And that's basically it. And by this way, you can also send uh, uh, broadcasts and uh, unicast packets. And uh, then by this way, you discover your nodes, who is my neighbor. Uh, so in the middle, this one has like one, two, three, uh, I think eight or six, no, uh, eight neighbors. And uh, so every no node needs to discover the its neighbors. And then you can do s uh, some table or whatever you can every node can uh, have its own own view of the topology and some data structure and okay and uh, I've already implemented some uh, uh, strategies uh, I would show you some uh, some of those who are more fun for example um, let me reload that file the game of life you know game of life is uh, it's a nice, nice game uh, for those uh, of you who know it. Some nodes are li alive, some uh, are dead, and depending on how many of its neighboring nodes are alive, um, they are uh, they're going to die or they're going to be alive again. And so I can simulate, I can step through, and okay, so this is the problem is with game of life is. Um, it's meant to be synchronous. Uh, so you have one one step is is like an in, uh, instantaneous update of the whole thing. You have something like double buffering, and uh, it doesn't really apply to mesh networks. But you can play around, and um, let's have some uh, interest more interesting topology. Um, let's remove the, gra the graph. Ah, remove. And I can create a random tree with some intersections. Yeah. And then you can, uh, okay, I can do one and a half second steps. And then I can, oh wait, this is maybe 10. Okay, and uh, now you see. Oh. At some point, every, everything is going to de be dead, I think. Okay, just 10 steps. Never mind. Um, okay, let's uh, load some different implementation. I've implemented something like, um, <coughs> um, uh, wait, let's start with this one. Reload. 
And uh, in this example, every node just uh, makes up a random number, and every node is going to, to come to a consensus uh, who has the biggest number and adapts it. So uh, it's just meant to, to do some sort of structure in some way. So it's just something to play around with and to get a feeling with uh, writing with um, writing mesh routing algorithms. And at one point, you see everybody is going to adapt the highest number that somebody has. So yeah. And then we can, on this, we can iterate some say, changes. Uh, not this one. This one. Reload. Simulate. Uh, reset. Uh, does it work? No, I think this one is broken. OK, happens. Never mind. OK, so um, that's the, la the last thing I want to show is uh, I've implemented something like a distance vector um, algorithm already. It's uh, something like, um, like Batman does. And it already works. Um, so this is basically uh, an, uh, an idea behind Batman. Uh, it's, it's not Batman at all, but uh, it works in a similar way without any shortcuts. Uh, and improvements. So let me. Ah, uh, okay. I wonder if it shows some change. <coughs> okay, I've done some. Now let me sh stop. Uh, the thing is, I can connect to notes. I hopefully everybody now has received the hello packet of everybody else in like 20 three steps. I don't think uh, they have, but well, I can now add a route from the selected node to the other selected node. So then I can deploy a packet. You see there's a one. And now can s step and the packet, oh, is uh, very fast. And yeah, maybe you've seen it uh, because uh, I've put, uh, OK, OK. Please stop simulation because I've put a 100 here. OK, let's do it again. Deploy packet. And yet, uh, oh, and now, you see, every step, the one, the packet, is moving towa towards uh, the, the destination. And at some point, it will reach it. And we see here uh, some um, st statistics, how efficient it is. And if all packets have reached the destination, so on these links, we might have packet loss. Um, you can also change the implementation of these links. Uh, that's why you have a reload uh, here and also the packets. Uh, what I do is I simulate a, a basic Ethernet layer where you have some just four MAC addresses. The next hop uh, sender, the next hop uh, source, the multi hop sender, uh, and the multi hop destination, stuff like that. So, yeah. That's basically it, um, and I hope um, I can play around with it. And um, well, or maybe somebody can uh, come up with a better routing solution, so we can have our global mesh network. Uh, I don't know if it works, uh, but at least it's a bit fun to play with, to find uh, how, find out how nodes can efficiently um, find a structure uh, between uh, themselves, like a virtual coordinate system fa maybe. There are a lot of different approaches you can go. And um, yeah, I hope this is a small contribution. It's a nice uh, p thing to play with. And uh, if somebody has questions, so um, yeah, please ask. Uh, sorry, the microphone is, is coming to you. Hello. Um, so uh, what kind of category? category would uh, gossip protocols fall into? You were talking about proactive and reactive. Uh, and gossip? the second thing is, mm -hmm. are you able to uh, tell me about any practical implementations of gossip protocols? Because I haven't been able to find any. OK, okay. I don't know much about gossip, pro pro gossip protocols. I, I think it's uh, where everybody tells about everybody else. Uh, but that's just my imagination from the hearing the word gossip protocol. I've heard about it, but I don't know much about it. So I can't really tell. Sorry about that. Anybody else? You? Uh, the thing, the thing is, I don't know much about these mesh networks, and and I didn't quite get the idea that you get from from node A to node B yeah. uh, with the one packet, and it, it stopped in the midway, and you had like a, a hundred 
um, you had a hundred um, iterations going on. Uh, what happened here? Uh, ah. I, I really didn't get it. I'm sorry. I, I think, um, well, actually, I don't really know what happened. Um, <laughs> Um, usually they find the route, uh, and there should be a route in the way this whole graph is uh, constructed. Um, so we see um, there were two seconds sent, and so far uh, uh, one got lost. Ah, I think um, one of the packets rec uh, was received, ah, yes. uh, and the other one was lost, but somehow the, the counter here wasn't updated. So I think it's, it's a bug I have to fix. Okay, so so that was the one that's lost, maybe. Yeah, I think uh, it was the uh, lost <laughs> there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's that's my theory. Uh, yeah. But it seems interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's 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 fun. Uh, I mean, basically, if we would be able to to. F uh, for every node to uh, have some structure, some virtual coordinate, and uh, the neighbor says, okay, um, uh, my neighbors have these coordinates, so my coordinate is this one. And when we could do it uh, like concurrently on every node, um, uh, I mean, in, in parallel um, distributed, then uh, essentially it would scale very good. But there are a lot of headaches, like when you have two networks that have some structure and then they are connected. How do you handle it? Um, that's different, uh, uh, difficult. Um, so it's a hard problem. And if, if you can find a solution that is like 98% correct, that would be re really great. Um, then we would have a really big uh, mesh network and we could um, do Freifunk networks that are really big, that are decentralized and don't rely on some uh, specific sh uh, infrastructure. For example, now we, okay, this is maybe a different problem, but we have routers uh, in a town, but usually they're not connected because um, they don't see each other. But um, it would be nice if we wouldn't be uh, size constrained, and I've told you at the beginning that uh, this big mesh net structure uh, forces uh, Freifunk communities to s do segmentation, uh, to throw in a lot of uh, money, uh, to, to pollute the airspace, stuff like that, uh, and a better mesh network, uh, mesh routing protocol would be really a great improvement because uh, even a small size community, I think uh, there's using server costs of, of a few hundred uh, euros per month. Um, yeah, that's, it shouldn't be necessary. necessary. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, that's my idea, and um, have fun playing. <laughs>